Amen. This morning, I come to you with a new series. I will begin a new series. I don't know how long it will be, so I cannot tell you. It's going to be for six weeks. Uh, we might be on this for a good part of uh, September into October, perhaps maybe into November, uh, Pasado. And um, uh, this is the most important thing you will ever hear concerning your faith. What we are in, the season we're entering into now, this will be the most important thing you will ever hear about your faith. And uh, you will need to take it seriously, what we're going to go through. This morning is going to be more of a lecture as this is introductory, as we go into this uh, new series. The series is called The Second Advent. Say the second advent. Second. Yeah, we're going to talk about Adventists. Say the second advent. Second. Mm. So the second advent, the second coming. Say the second coming. Mm. This is going to be very serious and uh, it's a teaching this morning. So uh, your amens are not required, but uh, your follow through is. You have to pay attention to this. This morning we begin this series with a title, An Open Secret. An Open Secret. Okay? We're going to reveal what is open and what is secret. Um, and a lot of people uh, are, are have a blanket over their eyes, spiritual eyes, and a blanket over the, their mind, and uh, blockers over their ears that they cannot um, deduce or understand or comprehend the time that we live in and why we are saved. A lot of people believe that we are saved so that we can be, we can do better in life. We're saved so that we can get a good partner. We're saved so that we can build a healthier lifestyle and, you know, live better lives. And that's it. But the enemy has done the best he can to conceal from the, from the world and from a lot of God's children the knowledge pertaining to the greatest event of the ages. If you ask a believer today, they'll tell you Jesus is coming, but they don't know why. Or the best they can tell you is that when he comes back, there will be no weeping. There will be no pain. There will be no sorrow. But they don't know why there will be no weeping. There will be, or why there will be no sorrow. So the enemy has done the best he can to conceal from the world and to conceal from God's children that it's preached on pulpits. We spend time on pulpits talking about our lives here, talking about our now, and not realize that our, our future determines the quality of our lives now. How we treat what's coming determines how we live our lives now. Do you understand? If we make the, our eternal goal the goal of our lives, even our, 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 our immediate lives at this preoccupied moment will be affected by it, will be impacted by it. So there is a great event coming. There's a great event coming. It's the greatest event you will ever get to witness if, if by chance it happens in our lifetime. It's not the Olympics. Neither is it the Grammys. I don't know what you consider to be a great event. It's not the coronation of a king. It is not the inauguration of a president. It's not the Golden Globes. It's not the summers. It's not the FIFA World Cup for soccer lovers. It is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. I told you I'm going to pace myself with this because this is quite crucial. In Matthew chapter 24, verse number 30, can we read together? Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will moan, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Can you imagine that, Bushe? The Son of Man, the sign of, sign of the Son of Man will appear in the clouds, and man, humanity, will moan, not rejoice. Somebody shout again, Jesus is coming back. And Jesus is coming back this time with power and glory. Say power and glory. Power and glory. 
I know we are busy with our lives. We are busy trying to wrap up uh, deals. We are busy trying to uh, uh, sign new contracts. We are busy uh, fixing on getting a better car or getting a good job or getting any kind of job. We are busy daydreaming about our dream wedding. And uh, some, some cannot wait to travel the world. Some cannot wait until they can leave their mother's house, their father's house. They, you, can, you can't wait to be an adult. You can't wait to get to, to your next milestone. And we are so preoccupied with these things that we have no clue of what time it is. Now, whenever God prepares to do a work in the earth, pace yourself, man. Whenever God prepares to do a work in the earth, the enemy is always in anticipation of such a move and tries to in interject himself in such a way as to conceal, to deceive, to thwart or render null in people's lives what God has prepared. As Jesus in Luke chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, when he is baptized and the spirit of the Lord descends upon him like unto a dove, and the voice of the Lord is heard from the heavens crying out, Behold, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Afterwards, he's led into the desert to be what? Tempted of the devil. Whenever God prepares to do a work in the earth, the enemy is always in anticipation of such a move and tries to interject himself in such a way as to conceal. He tries to cover up, tries to uh, make blurry, tries to make uh, it difficult, tries to make it uh, uh, difficult for you to decode or understand it. And he will, tr he will deceive so that as many as can will believe a lie concerning what God is about to do. Or he will do his best to try and uh, uh, antagonize you and frustrate you to try and thwart what God is about to do or render what God is about to do of no importance. And a lot of people are ignorant of the imminent return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We all have heard that Jesus is coming back. We sometimes do say it. You may post it on the internet. You may open up your mouth and say it one time. Or you may read it in the Bible. But a lot of us are ignorant of the truth that Jesus is coming back. And that ignorance is seen in our lack of preparedness. If you knew Jesus is coming back, it would show in how prepared you are. If you knew Jesus is coming back, you would cease from being complacent. You would cease from needing somebody to pet you on the back in order for you to serve the Lord. If you knew Jesus is coming back, if you truly knew that Je Jesus is coming back and were not ignorant of it, you would cease to have excuses. Every excuse you have, you would put it down. If you knew, if you are not oblivious of the imminent return of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will see it in your prayer life. You see ignorance concerning the coming of the Lord in prayerlessness. In lack of fellowship with Christ. In how far you are in your relationship with Christ. You see it in our laziness towards the things of God. You, you are lazy to study God's word. You are lazy to pray. You are lazy when it comes to God's things. They are secondary. We live in a time where we have more zeal and passion for life to get better here on earth. We will put money. We will put time. We will pray for things to get better here on this earth. We have more time for bettering our lives now than we have for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. I've got news for you. It's not going to get better. You may move into a better house. You may get married to a good guy. Raise a beautiful family. But I tell you now, it's not going to get better. Because the word of God shows us it will only get better when Christ returns. Because if in this life we only have hope, then, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, we are of all men most miserable. In order to appreciate the second advent, say second advent again. 
In order for us to appreciate the second coming of, of the Lord Jesus Christ, we must take time to consider the events that surround the first advent. Say first advent. What is the first advent? Christ was born of a virgin. Without controversy, Christ was born of a virgin. It is historic. You can see it historically in books outside the Bible. He was taken to Egypt and consequently returned. And at the age of 12, he was arguing with the doctors of law. And at the age of 30, he was baptized of John uh, in the Jordan. And immediately thereafter, uh, he was personally challenged by Satan for 40 days. Uh, subsequent to that, he, he, he followed his three and one half years of uh, his unparalleled earthly ministry. And on the, uh, 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 at the end of the three and one half years, he was ultimately tried. You know that. And uh, he was sentenced to death. Even though he had not committed any crime, he was crucified. And uh, on that cross, he was hung. And on that cross, he died. And when he died, they buried him. And on the third day of his public death, he arose from the dead and ascended to the Father. He told Mary Magdalene, do not touch me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. And he ascended to the Father, but he quickly returned after eight days, because it takes eight days to go through the procession of ordaining and uh, installing a high priest. So he took his body, the sacrifice, and he took it to the heavenly tabernacle and presented it as a sacrifice while he stood as its high priest. And after eight days, he returned and spent 40 days and nights with his disciples. He was seen by 500 people at one time. And finally he ascended to the Father in the presence of his disciples. This is the first advent. And in Acts chapter 1 verse 9 to 11, I don't understand why you're not writing anything. I cannot fathom. I've got passages and passages of scripture I'm quoting today. I, I wish for you to be writing something. You are not that smart. Trust me. He ought to be writing something. In Acts chapter 1 verse 9 to 11, it reveals, Now when he had spoken these things, while they watched. Say, while they watched. While they watched. What were they doing? They were watching. They were not sleeping. Their eyes were opened. He was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked. Say, say while they looked. While they looked. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold. Say, behold. Two men stood by them in white apparel, who said, who also said, men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, say this same Jesus, who was taken up, say that, from you into heaven, will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah to that. This is what transpired at the first advent. The second advent is far more than just a quick exodus of faithful saints of God from this earth. Yes, it will be in a moment in the twinkling of an eye as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 and 52. But the second advent will cover a period of at least between three and a half years to about seven years. The second advent will encompass two, say two, major appearings of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to say that because I want you to incorporate that into your mind. Because you may have heard it or you may have had somebody say it, but we're going to harmonize it according to the scriptures. Say that the second advent will encompass two major appearings of our Lord Jesus Christ. You're going to see for yourselves that the scriptures teach us that there are two phases, say two phases, two stages, two manifestations of the same second advent. Okay. In order to establish the truth, anytime you want to establish the truth, the scriptures must be rightly divided. 
You cannot establish the truth because you feel like it. You cannot establish the truth because you heard somebody say it. You cannot establish the truth because many people say it like that. You establish the truth by rightly dividing the word of God. Uh, Peter alludes to this in the second letter. Do not flight it. In the second letter of Peter uh, in uh, chapter 1 verse number 20. That we must know this first. Say know this first. That no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. No prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. It may work for you in private. But it is not intended for private interpretation. Some scriptures undertake to explain the secret. Say the secret. Appearing of Christ. Say the secret appearing of Christ. Work with me. There are also other scriptures that explain or prophesy rather of the opening, open appearing. Say open appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are scriptures that undertake to explain the secret appearing of Christ. And there are scriptures that uh, 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 put in the work to explain and to uh, show out of prophecy what is the open appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it's an open secret. Uh, These scriptures are not in conflict. As you may think, and it is a task that is set before me this morning to harmonize the word of God. In order for us to arrive at the truth, we learn that we must rightly divide the word of God. And so we're going to find out what is the truth concerning the second advent. Say second advent again. It is impossible to understand the second advent without first being grounded in the truth concerning the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. Say the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. In Hebrews chapter 6 verse number 1 to verse number 3. It's going to be on the screen, so I'm not going to wait for you to flip your pages. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 1 to verse number 3. Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptism, adore, of laying on of hands, Niki, of the resurrection of the dead, Tiani, and of eternal judgment, Mabongi. And this we will do if God permits. But Paul says these doctrines that you hear of these four are basic. Everyone should have a hang of it. It should not even be taught among us. But of, out of necessity, when there is necessity, we will do. We'll teach it if the Lord permits. So it is impossible to understand the second advent without understanding these principles and without, without uh, fully understanding the uh, uh, or, or being grounded rather in the truth concerning the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. Say the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead. When you understand the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead, only then will you comprehend why Christ must return. When your mind is made up concerning the resurrection of the dead, only then will you understand why, why Christ must must return for his saints. Say Christ must return for his saints. Before he can come with his saints. So Christ must return for his saints. Say that. Before he can, re he can, he can come with his saints. Because he himself promised in John 14 verse number 3. And if I go. John 14 verse number 3. Now if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. He's coming for us, for his saints. That where I am, there you may be also. This is when Christ will come for his saints. And now we jump to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. We are rightly dividing in order for us to get to the bottom of this. Say the second advent again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 12 to verse 13. And may the Lord make you increase and abound in love to one another and to all, just as we do to you, so that he may establish your hearts blameless in holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. Do you understand? I'm going to prepare a place for you. 
John 14 verse 3. So that when I return, I will receive you to myself. That is him coming for us. 1 Thessalonians 3 verse 12, uh, verse 13. So that he may establish your hearts blameless. Say blameless. In holiness. Say in holiness. Before our God and Father. This is not blameless according to your own understanding. This is not blameless because you hired people to support you. This is blameless before God. This is holiness in God. In God the Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So Jesus must come for his saints and then he will come with his saints. You understand that? These are two different events. Separated by three and one half years. Okay? So it is when Christ comes for his bride. Say his bride. Have you ever had that concept? It is when Christ comes for his bride that we have the secret appearing of Christ. Some call it the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 2. For you yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. When you get a chance, put this in your notes. When you get a chance, read the entirety of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. You yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. He, uh, he harmonizes that as uh, John the Apostle records uh, in uh, uh, the Revelation, the third chapter and verse three. Remember, therefore, how you have received and heard. You've not just received it. You've also heard. Hold fast. Say hold fast. And repent. To hold fast, my brother, is not to hold every now and then. It's not to hold on Sunday morning. It's not to hold on Thursday. It is to hold and glue up your hand. Tie your hand. And do not let go. Let your head be permanently holding fast. And he says, repent. Repent. Turn from your wicked ways. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief. I told, the, uh, I told the church on Thursday in our Bible class that the Lord will come as a thief in the night to those who are not watching. Yeah. If you are not holding fast, it will be a surprise. If you have not repented, it will catch you unawares. If you do not watch, he will come upon you as a thief and says, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. It is then when Christ comes for his bride that he comes as a thief in the night. You understand? And when he comes for his bride, the world will not be aware at the time that the bride of Christ has been caught away. I know movies portray a certain picture, but do not listen to that. Then approximately, approximately three and one half years after that, in that period, the seven plagues of Revelation, the seven plagues of the wrath of God will have been poured onto the earth. Do everything you must. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Hold fast and repent. Watch and pray lest the day of the Lord catches you like a thief in the night because if it does you must endure the seven plagues of the wrath of God that will be poured upon the earth Christ returns with his bride and all his holy angels with him as it's recorded as he says himself in uh, Matthew 25 verse number 31 when the son of man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him then he will sit on the throne of his glory did you see that? When the son of man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. This is when we will have the open appearing, say open appearing. When every eye shall see him. Revelation chapter one, verse seven. Behold, he is coming with clouds and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will moan because of him. Even so, amen. Can you say amen to this? Amen. How will those who pierced him see him? You must go back to the doctrine of the resurrection of the dead to understand that all men in his open 
appearing, all men will see him. Even, though, even the man who put a spear in his side will see him that day. Then in Matthew chapter 24, verse number 30, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will moon and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. I'm going to be giving you quite a few scriptures, so you got, to bear, you, got, you got to walk with me. Daniel 7 verse 13, I was watching in the night visions and behold one like the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven he came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him somebody shout jesus is coming back this is this recording is what is known as uh, the rise of the morning star say morning star we love to sing songs like you are the rose of Sharon. You are the morning star. But we don't understand what it means for the morning star to appear. When the morning star shines, this is just prior uh, to sunrise or the breaking of the day. While it is still night, the morning star will appear. Paul says in Romans 13 verse number 12, the night is far spent, Tiani. The day is at hand. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. If you're hearing the sound of my voice, you must cast off the works of darkness today and put on the armor of light because there is a day coming while you yet are in your slumber that the morning star will rise before the rising of the sun. And if you do not see it, you will have missed it. So while the night is still prevailing over the world, prior to the open appearing of Christ, Christ will appear as the morning star, as the day star, say day star, to a small handful, keyword small, to a small handful. I got news for you this morning, the majority is wrong. According to the word of God, the majority is always wrong. And when Christ will appear, it will be to a small handful that see him at his secret appearing. In 2 Peter chapter, chapter 1 verse number 19, Peter writes and he says, And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns. And the morning star rises in your hearts. And uh, it will be a few that rise early enough to glimpse, to catch a glimpse of the morning star before the breaking of the day. This is when Christ comes for his saints. And may it be that you're not too tired on that day. May it be that you're not too caught up in the things of this world. May it be that you're not weary. Your heart is not weary because of what men do. Your heart is not weary because of what money can do to you. But that you are waiting and that you are holding fast and that you are seeking the face of the Lord. This is when the bride of Christ is caught away. And then in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Verse 13 all the way to 18, uh, Paul writes to the Thessal church at Thessalonica and he says, but I do not want you to be ignorant. Say, don't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord. Say by the word of the Lord. We speak what we speak by the word of the Lord that we who are alive, say we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. Come on, say it. Say we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Now for the Lord himself would descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will what? Rise first. Then we who are alive, say then we who are alive and remain. Say it again, we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. John chapter 14 
Verse number three, I am going to prepare a place for you. And when I have prepared a place for you, I will come back and receive you to myself. So that wherever I will be, you will be also. Paul says in verse number 18, therefore comfort one another with these words. When you comfort those who moan, when you comfort those who are slacking, when you comfort those who, fe who are feeling weary, when you comfort those who are in complacence, when you caution those who are backsliding, tell them Jesus is coming back. Amen. Then three and one half years later, Christ comes with all his saints. These three and one half years I keep mentioning, we will get into it as we go. Then in Zachariah, Zachariah chapter 14, verse number five, then you shall flee through my mountain valley, for the mountain valley shall reach to Azal. Yes, you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uzzah, king of Judah. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with you. It's a prophecy. It's a prophecy. And Jude tells us in the 14th verse of Jude. Now Enoch the seventh from Adam prophesied. Uh, if you did not know, Enoch was a prophet. E Enoch prophesied about this man also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints. This is not the secretive uh, coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Just as the sun rises in the morning uh, of a new day and the world stirs uh, from its sleep and acknowledging the dissipating of the darkness uh, as it ushers the breaking of the day, so shall Christ appear openly. Say openly. So, so shall Christ appear openly uh, in the, uh, uh, to the world as the sun rises uh, from the east and sets in the west. As the sun rises from the rising of the sun in the morning, just as the sun shows up, so will Christ appear openly. Mm. Malachi 4 verse 2. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness, say the son of righteousness, shall arise with healing in his wings. Christ is both the morning star, which is the day star, and he's also the son of righteousness. So Christ is the morning star. Say morning star. He is the day star, which is the same thing. And he's also the son of righteousness. S-U-N. Say the son of righteousness. So he is both. both. Christ is both. And uh, so he comes as the morning star before the breaking of the day. And uh, a few will see him. At, the, at that face. Say a few. Say I want to be in that number. Say I want to be counted. Amongst the few. This is when he is also. Uh, appearing as referred to as the day star. But when he comes as the son of righteousness. Say the son of righteousness. When he comes as the son of righteousness. With healing in his wings. It is then that the world is made aware. That the second advent. Has transpired. We do not cover up the resurrection of the dead and blanket it with fairy tales that have no basings of scripture. But we harmonize the scripture and this we will also do concerning the second advent. I must make this plain. I'm done. Because I've got one minute left there. I must make this plain. That the message I'm sharing with you today is not a new message. This is, or this was, the message of the early church. It is the hope of our salvation. Because without the promise of Christ returning, there is no reason for us to gather. I'm going to give you a bit, bit of history before I close. In 1830 in England, it was reported that a woman by the name of Margaret MacDonald prophesied that there would be two phases to the second advent. But we do not preach a vision or a prophecy. Even though it stands alone as biblical doctrine. But when a prophecy or a vision harmonizes with the scriptures, then that prophecy or vision is indeed valid, can be validated as true. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 16 to verse 19, for we do not follow cunningly devised fables 
We did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peter says we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When such a voice came to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And we heard this voice which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain, on the Mount of Transfiguration, Mount Tabor. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. If this woman in England did indeed prophesy that there would be two phases of the Lord's coming, as we're going to zoom into the scriptures, Caleb, please help. As we're going to zoom into the scriptures over the next few weeks into months, we'll be able to validate and substantiate it by the scriptures. Isaiah 8 verse number 20 says, To the law and to the testimony, if they do not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Whatever we share, however excited we get, if what we share does not speak according to this word, we'll speak it because we have no light in us. We understand and preach the doctrine of the word of God only because those specific doctrinal positions can be substantiated and proven by scripture. The Bible clearly defines two phases of the second advent and we rejoice in that God has not let us his children walk in darkness concerning this truth this is the gospel Jesus is coming back the greatest event of all time is upon us the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ is imminent and his reign from Jerusalem in glory is a reality. Now Jeremiah records in chapter 3 verse 17. At the time Jerusalem shall be called the throne of the Lord. Say the throne of the Lord. Rather say Jerusalem shall be called. Come on say Jerusalem shall be called. The throne of the Lord. And Jeremiah records, and all the nations shall be gathered to it, to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. No more shall they follow the dictates of their evil hearts. And in Luke chapter 1 verse 32 to verse 33, it's recorded, he will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. Of this kingdom's rule, of this kingdom's reign, of this kingdom's power and authority, Jesus. God's righteousness revealed of his kingdom's rule of his this kingdom's reign of this kingdom's power and authority Jesus God's righteousness revealed of this kingdom's reign of this kingdom's rule 
of this kingdom's power and authority, Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. Can you stand? Of this kingdom's reign, of this kingdom's rule, of this kingdom's power and authority, Jesus, God's righteousness revealed. Satan has failed to conceal this truth from us. We have been privileged by God. Say, I am privileged by God. To be counted among those, to be counted among the brethren to whom the truth is unveiled. I'm going to repeat this as I bring this to a close. This is not a new revelation. This is the message of the apostles. This is the message of the prophets. And this is the message of our Lord Jesus Christ himself. Jesus is coming back. I wish you could tell your neighbor intently, Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. Ask them, are you ready for the return of the Lord? The reason we come in week, week in and week out, the reason why we fellowship is in preparing, in readiness for the return of our Lord. The question is, will he come to you as the morning star? Or as the son of righteousness with healing in his wings? What I know is that in either event, Jesus is coming back. So the spirit and the, br and the bride say, come. The spirit and the bride say, come. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. The Holy Spirit agrees with the church and say, even so, come Lord Jesus. The church should live its life. When I say the church, I'm not talking about the church, I'm talking about you. You should live your life with a posture that says, come Lord Jesus. We see the houses, we see the money, we see the jobs, we see the children, we see the spouses, we see the, the life that we desire to live. But that is set aside. It is secondary to this. The spirit and the bride says, come. This is the gospel. How you, how you relate with your spouse should be screaming, come Lord Jesus. How you raise your children should be, should be shouting, should reflect. Jesus is coming back. How you serve, where you serve, wherever you go. You should be in agreement with the Spirit. We witness to others to come to the saving of their souls because the Spirit and the Bride says, Come, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Stretch out your hand. You've been complacent too long. You've been caught up in yourself too long. You've led your life your own way for too long. I know. I know you pray. But take inventory of your prayer life. It's about what you can get out of God. But this is time for you to begin to align with the agenda of the king. The agenda of the gospel. This is the gospel. This is the purpose of your salvation. That you may lead a life that is saying, even so come Lord Jesus. And as you do that, listen to me, God will send men and women that will come through you. So that they may, may too be in agreement with the spirit and the bride.